This system gets you to the ground alive every single time, and in the next few minutes, you're going to master it. It's called the ILS, the Instrument Landing System. If you want to fly your virtual aircraft in low visibility, or even on VATSIM using IFR procedures, the ILS is going to be your best friend. By the end of this video, you'll know what the ILS is, how it works, and how to fly a Cat 1 ILS in the Airbus A320. What is the ILS? To keep it simple, it gives you two main signals. One horizontal and one vertical. The horizontal signal, called the localizer, keeps you lined up with the runway center line. The vertical signal, called the glide slope, keeps you on the perfect descent path. Once both signals are picked up, you've basically got an invisible, perfectly straight path down to the runway, and the autopilot can follow it all the way to touchdown. The glide slope is usually set at 3 degrees, giving about 300 feet of descent per nautical mile. But since aircraft use feet per minute, there's an easy trick to figure that out. We'll get to it soon. Alright, so how does the ILS work from the pilot's perspective? Every ILS has three pieces of info, a frequency, a course, and an identifier. Finding them is easy, they're right there on your navigraph or similar charts. For example, on this chart, the frequency is 110.15. That's what you'll tune your aircraft to. The identifier here is India Bravo Tango Sierra. Check that to confirm you're on the correct ILS. The little Morse code next to it is a legacy feature and isn't necessary today. And finally, the course, 267 degrees. That lines your aircraft up perfectly with the runway. Now, in most modern aircraft, especially our favorite Airbuses, this all tunes automatically when you select an ILS approach in the MCDU. But on VATSIM, always double check. Sometimes you'll need to set it manually, which we'll learn to do later. Okay then, seatbelts on, let's talk about ILS categories. There are three main types, Cat 1, Cat 2, and Cat 3. Each one has a decision height, the altitude where the pilot must see the runway, and a runway visual range, which is basically how far you can see out of the window. Cat 1 lets you go down to 200 feet, Cat 2 goes lower, about 100 feet, and Cat 3 can handle fully automatic landings. Cat 3 also splits into three further categories. Cat 3A, B, and C. Cat 3A goes down to 100 feet. Cat 3B, around 50 feet. And Cat 3C has no limits at all. But it's not used in practice because you still need to see to taxi. Normally, you'll be flying Cat 1 approaches unless ATC or ATIS say otherwise. Now, you might also see letters like Zulu Yankee or X-Ray next to the ILS procedure. For example, ILS Zulu 2-4. Those are just different variants of the same approach, small changes in transitions or missed approach paths. Zulu is usually the default, so plan for that unless told otherwise by air traffic control or via ATIS. Now that we know everything about an ILS, it's now time to fly one in the A320. By the way, if you're new, welcome to Flight Deck Focus. I am a student glider pilot and prospective commercial pilot who loves to explore the systems behind flight. So let's fly the ILS. All right. We're flying this Airbus A320 into Luxembourg on a Cat 1 ILS for runway 24. This tutorial is all about flying the ILS. We're not diving into every button on the A320 here. This is for flights and purposes only, so no real world flying advice whatsoever. As always, let's start with preparation. First up, let's check the charts. We want to confirm the frequency, course, and decision height. Next, let's take a peek at the flight plan and make sure that the ILS Zulu 24 approach is selected. You won't actually see Cat 1, 2, or 3 listed in the MCDU because that's determined by the approach itself. Usually, this will automatically load the frequency and course into the radio navigation page, but it's always worth double checking to check that the ILS frequency and course match the charts. You can also check the identifier to be really sure. Then, fill in your approach phase information and we'll put a special focus on the decision height, which for Cat 1 is usually 200 feet. You might notice a larger decision altitude number, that's the same thing, just reference to the sea level instead of height above the ground. For Cat 1, this larger decision altitude is used. Decision height is normally only used for higher accuracy Cat 2 or 3 approaches. Preparation is key for every phase of flight, it keeps you ahead of the plane and fully in control. Skipping ahead just a bit, now it's time to intercept the localizer, that's the lateral guidance. Make sure that the LS button on the ethos panel is turned on. This brings up pink diamond indicators to show how accurate your approach is. 
This is normally done while passing 10,000 feet. When intercepting the localizer, aim for a shallow angle of around 30 degrees or less so that you don't overshoot the localizer. This can be greater, but you must be careful not to overshoot. If ATC is vectoring you or you're flying a transition, that's usually handled for you. Once you're near the localizer, but before crossing it, arm lock to prime the autopilot. Once it captures the localizer, the pink diamond on your PFD will center and lock mode will show up on the FMA. From here, the plane will follow the localizer and you're lined up with the runway. Next up, the glide slope. Always intercept it from below so you're not chasing it from above. You should be at the approach's platform or intercept altitude which will guarantee an intercept from below. To do this, arm approach mode to capture both the localizer and glide slope at the same time. At this point you can also activate the second autopilot for redundancy. You'll see the pink diamond on the right come down to the center when intercepting. You'll see a small GS appear on the FMA and once it's captured it'll turn large and green. Most glide slopes are 3 degrees, which is pretty standard. To figure out your descent rate, here's a quick trick. Take your indicated airspeed, divide it by 2, then add a 0 at the end. So flying 140 knots, that's 140 divided by 2, which is 70, then add a 0, which is 700 feet per minute. Easy! Now that we're fully established on the ILS, it's time to think about landing. By 200 feet, which is your decision height, you must see the runway. If not, execute a missed approach. Because this is a Cat 1 ILS, you'll disconnect the autopilot and land manually. You can do this whenever you're ready, usually between 500 and 1000 feet above the ground, which is a good spot. Keep the plane stabilized, making only minor corrections to ensure that the pink diamonds remain centered. Another way to remain accurate is just to keep your eyes outside and hold the runway in the same spot. It should get bigger as you descend, but don't chase it. Stay stabilized. At about 30 to 50 feet, fly and land as normal. All of these steps will be on screen for the next few seconds, so feel free to pause and read along as you fly the approach. So that's the ILS, your best friend for IFR flying. It combines the localizer for lateral guidance and the glide slope for vertical guidance, and together they guide you precisely and safely to the runway. Know your frequencies, courses and decision heights and you'll be ready for any ILS approach with confidence. Please consider subscribing and thanks for watching. This is Flight Deck Focus, that was the ILS and I'll see you in the next one.